What's going on guys, Britter here. Today we're going to be checking out Norland. It has released for early access. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. I played the tutorial a while, I mean the demo, a while back and I really liked it. So I'm pretty excited to jump in here. Norland is a complex game with a lot of new mechanics. For new players, we highly recommend going through our brief tutorial, after which you'll be able to continue playing with beginner friendly settings. Okay, we'll start with the tutor tutorial. Barbaric. I don't know, can it? Welcome to the Norland. You are in charge of helping a noble family of lords who own a province in Norland achieve prosperity, security, and personal ambitions. Your lords obey your commands, but they also have their own will. Your history is just the beginning. It's just beginning. Okay. Take a look around. Use the mouse wheel. Zoom in and out. Okay. When you need to stop and think, pause the game by pressing space or the button on, button on the right corner. Sometimes it makes sense to accelerate the passage of time. For example, at night when everyone is sleeping, try the different game speeds using the 1, 2, 3 keys or the time control buttons. Character needs. While you can only directly give orders to your lords, all characters in Norland have thoughts and needs. If these needs are not met, characters will become unhappy and start causing problems. Select a lord by clicking on their portrait. Click on the mood tab in the character menu to see their thoughts and needs. So we'll click on this guy here. And then we'll click on this. Mood. The most basic of needs are food and rest, which are replenished by consuming food and alcohol. You have a stock of provisions for the time being, but it is necessary to ensure reliable food and alcohol production so your characters don't go hungry. To do this, let's learn how to construct and manage buildings, starting with managing builders. Okay. He's certain that a great future awaits our noble house. Full of energy. He's got some holy rings. Mother Sophia loves me. Had a hearty meal. Ooh, need for sex. Desires to procreate and continue their lineage. Satisfied during dating. Okay, interesting. Okay. Time to learn building management. In Norland, you only control the noble family, so you need to assign a manager to oversee the workers in the buildings. The instructions given by the managing lord are sufficient for three days. And on average, one lord can manage seven to ten buildings. Okay. Let's appoint a manager to the hall where your builders are assigned. Is this the hall? Okay. Um, select the management button in the menu that appears in the left bottom corner. Choose a lord for the manager role. Wait for the lord to distribute instructions to the workers. wonder if it matters. Uh, production bonus 232. Uh, management level. Why is it asking me to select this one? Because this one's management level is way higher. And the production is much higher. Okay, I'm just going to pick. Oh, it won't let me. Why won't it let me though? Um, 
Okay. Wait for the Lord to distribute instructions to the workers. Okay. He's talking to that guy. hit play speed it up a bit okay he's talking to another guy got some experience great the workers are now aware of your plans and ready to start building what is the primary resource used in construction so our first priority is to build a lumber mill click on the construction menu select the resources heading select lumber mill and place it in the designated area Okay, so I guess I don't have to decide. I guess it's going to tell me where. Build the lumber mill here. Doesn't matter. Oh, right there. Okay. Now, let's build a rutabudge field to ensure everyone has food. The rye field is best placed on fertile soil. Otherwise, it will yield very little. Click the right mouse button to go back one step in the construction menu. Select rutabaga field. After choosing the construction site, exit the construction menu using the right mouse button. Wait for the construction of the buildings to be completed. Alright, so place the object. Okay, it's up here. Right there. Go out of here and then speed it up. Alright, so we've got them building our lumber mill and our field here. Lumber mill's almost done. Or so it appears. Okay. Now they're going to the fields. Well, at least one guy's going to the fields. Oh yeah, more is coming. Okay. Since the employees need instructions, don't forget to assign managers to new buildings. Note that the higher the Lord's management skill, the more additional product the building will produce under their management. Select the lumber mill, lumber mill and assign a manager through the building menu in the bottom left corner. Okay, so appoint a manager and I want him for the thing. Maybe that's why it made me pick the other guy because I want the wood to be on point. And then here we're going to appoint this guy too. You can quickly assign managers by clicking on a building, the right mouse button. Now I just assigned him to two places. I wonder if that's acceptable. Great. We have food production sorted out. Now it's time for alcohol, which helps to relieve fatigue after a hard day's work. We already have a built, we already have a built we have already built a brewery for alcohol production, so let's create an order for the production of the cheapest type of alcohol, Moonshine, which is made from rutabaga. Open the production menu, and we're going to hit do until, uh, specify how much menu sign you want to have in the warehouse. Uh, so we want to do 100 units. Now it's necessary to appoint a manager in the brewery and the peasants will take rutabaga from the warehouse by themselves and at the end of the working day they will bring the produced moonshine to the warehouse. Please note that you already have 50 units of moonshine. So to complete the task of producing 100 units of moonshine you will need an additional 50 units of rutabaga as one unit of rutabaga produces one unit of moonshine. Done. Close the production menu. Appoint a manager at the brewery to start production. So this is the brewery and I'm going to do Zaritza since they're close. Once the workers receive instructions, they will begin their duties. During the day they work and in the evening they tend to their own needs, receiving a wage which they use to buy food and alcohol from your markets and taverns. Ideally, each character will consume one unit of food and one unit of alcohol per day. Characters will try to purchase higher quality goods whenever possible. Lords receive food and alcohol for free, delivered to the hall by the servants who take it from the warehouse. Alright. 
On the right, under the daily expenses heading, you can see the daily wages. On the left, you can set the prices and quantity of each resources, resource that can be sold to the peasants every evening. Okay. You can see the price and quantity. So we don't have any meat. We have 100 rutabaga, 50 flour, and 50 moonshine right now. Okay. Peasants first try to buy food and then use the remaining money on alcohol if they can afford it. By regulating prices and resource availability, you can influence their consumption of these resources, which affects their mood and financial savings, displayed on the right. Currently, workers' wages are 8 gold coins. The price of rutabaga is 4 coins, and the price of moonshine is 7 coins. This is not enough for peasants to buy both rutabaga and moonshine daily, so they will have to save for several days to go to the tavern. Let's reduce the price of moonshine to 4 gold coins so that workers can buy it every day with their wages. This will make them happier. Okay. And then we close this. By satisfying the needs of peasants, you increase their average mood, which affects migration. A high average mood will attract new workers to your city. Conversely, unhappy peasants will leave the city and become criminals. Let's find out what concerns them the most. Okay, so tasteless rutabaga and repulsive moonshine. At, um, at the bottom, the strongest negative thoughts of the peasants are written along with the number of characters that share that share them so seven people think both things we can see here that they are displeased by the flavorless rutabaga and the unappetizing moonshine we can resolve this by producing higher quality products but we can't do that without specialized knowledge contained in books but where can we get them ah here comes the holy caravan to the rescue they will sell us books and give us much needed gold for our other resources Holy Caravan. Gold circulates through the economy of Norland in three ways. The pocket of peasants, migrant, migrants, trade with neighbors, and the Holy Caravan. The Holy Caravan arrives in the evening every one to three days and is the main source of gold, holy rings, a luxury appreciated by lords that serves as the currency of their class, books, and prisoners. Wait until the caravan arrives at its destination. Click on the caravan leader and select a lord to trade with him. Note that the higher the Lord's trade skill, the more profitable the trade will be. The caravan leaves the city at midnight, so ensure you complete all your business before then. You can speed up the time using the keys. Okay. So, where is this caravan? Is this it? Yeah. I guess it has to like sit somewhere okay uh yeah um this guy um okay the church supports the natural balance of supply and demand so if you start selling too much of one product the sale price will decrease but for now we shouldn't let this worry us sell 30 in some moonshine you produced so, is this us? Yes. There we go, 30. Buy the book Hop and Field, Hop, Field, and Beer. And then close the trade menu. You can move more items at once by holding down the shift key. Got it. All right. Now that we have a book on how to grow hops and produce beer, you can study it in the library through the knowledge menu. Books can be written in different languages, but most are written in the imperial language. Open the knowledge menu, assign a lord to study brewing. Now that we have a book on how to grow hops and produce beer, you can study it in the library through the knowledge menu. All right, we already did that. So hops and field beer, learn, and I think I'm going to have Zarista. If at least one Lord has read a book, the abilities and effects it enables becomes available to all. However, when that Lord dies, all benefits of the knowledge will be lost. Close the knowledge menu. Well, that's kind of... Um, that's kind of crazy. Um, 
tasks for lords. Besides managing buildings, your lords can also carry out other tasks. However, they will refuse to do any task if they are unhappy. It seems that one of them is already unhappy now. This is indicated by the red background in their portrait. Let's see what happens. Select the unhappy lord by clicking, clicking on their portrait at the top or finding the lord on the map. Um, so the character feels poor and dreams of owning at least five holy rings. Um, in the Lord's character menu, you can see their main status indicators, such as mood and loyalty, inventory and traits. You can hover over any icon and indicator to learn more details. Um, okay. If a lord's mood is low, they may become depressed. Oh man, I should have not clicked that. Here you can see a lord's needs and thoughts, the sum of which determines their mood. If it's below 25, they are unhappy. Um, yeah, they're definitely below 25. Now let's return to the main tab to fill the swish and thereby improve the lord's mood. I don't know what I'm fulfilling because I didn't. Oh, okay. If you hover your, your mouse over the desire icon, you will see that this lord dreams of holy rings. The rings that appear in the resource list in the upper left corner belong to your king and are in his inventory. Let's share the holy rings with this lord by rewarding them. In addition to satisfying the current desire, this action will increase the lord's loyalty. Click the action button, select the king section, select the reward action, and assign your king to perform the action. Reward. Once your king finds the time, he'll reward the lord you have chosen. However, you can make him complete the task immediately. Click on the king, or click on the reward task in the list of received tasks at the top of the menu. Wait for the king to reward the unhappy lord. Okay, now we can see that his desire was fulfilled. Holy rings, like the ones you bestowed upon your lord, cannot be produced. They can only be purchased from the holy caravan with gold. And since selling large volumes of goods lowers prices with the caravan, sometimes it makes sense to trade with neighbors where prices remain more stable. To enter into a trade contract, you must either be in the same state as your neighbor or have friendly relations with them. There are many ways to establish friendship with a neighboring king. Give him a gift, send your lord on a mission, or simply send your king to hunt together with him. Now let's improve the neighboring king's attitude towards yours so we can then set up trade deal with them. Go to the world map and click on the neighboring city to open its menu. Click the action button, select lords, and select the king. Select hunt and choose your king as the hunting partner. Wait until the kings have hunted together. Hint, to access the world map, your character must first reach the edge of the local map. Click on their portrait at the top to follow them. Alright, so we're going to click on here and then we're going to click on assign the lords uh, lords Cairn to fresh wolf hunting and we'll send um We're going to send Zarista. Actually, we're going to send Zeover. All right. Click on their porch at the top to follow them. So, there he goes. Let's see how this goes.
Excellent. Your king's had a great time together, and now the neighboring king considers you a friend. The relationship is above 25. It's the perfect time to talk business. Click on the neighboring city to open its menu. Click the action button, select trade, and select buy moonshine. Assign your lord to finalize the deal. To set up a profitable deal, send your lord with the highest trade skill. Wait until the task is completed. So we're going to do here, trade, buy moonshine. Okay. Many tasks on the world map can be carried out using messengers who act directly on behalf of your king. However, they require paper to transmit the message. Speed up time a bit here. Okay. To the rightful ruler of the land, Sparksville. For me, it is great honor to engage in a trade agreement with you. Trade, above all, serves as an assurance of peace between our kingdom, signed by me and no one else, King Cairn. Karen and you have entered into a trade agreement. Relationship with Karen have improved plus 10. The city budget of the partner will increase and the population of their city will grow by one inhabitant after each transaction. As part of the trade agreement, Karen will offer to buy 16 moonshine for 62 gold on a daily basis, which amounts to 4 gold per item. Which means I'm not selling... Oh, I guess I'm selling the moonshine to him. Wait. Yeah, I guess I'm selling the moonshine to him for the same price I'm selling it to our people. While the deal is active, every morning at 11, a button to sell moonshine will appear in the trade menu. The price negotiated by your lord will be honored even as prices fluctuate on the main marketplace. Open the trade menu, sell the moonshine at today's offer, close the trade menu. For the trade to take place, an available peasant from your city will be dispatched to the target city. The distance between your kingdoms means this kind of trade is not instantaneous. However, these regular exchanges don't require paper like other actions on the global map do, since your king's already agreed to the deal. Return to the local map by pressing the world button or right-clicking anywhere. Bandit attack. Oh, holy Sophia. Bandits have stealthily approached our settlement. We must fight back. Fortunately, we have some time before they launch their attack. Open the army menu. The army menu allows you to com create combat squads, but first you need to hire warriors. Click the add button. We have a few warriors, but we would like to increase our chances. You can add warriors by freeing prisoners, inviting unfortunate peasants, or hiring mercenaries. Newly hired peasants and prisoners will be consumed by the fear of death and will run away at the first sign of danger, while mercenaries usually need one to two days to reach your settlement. Fortunately, there is a group of mercenaries near the city ready to be hired right now, and there is some weaponry in the warehouse, so let's increase your army. Note that you must pay the church a daily tax for your warriors, the amount of which depends on their skill. Hire several mercenaries. So, I'm going to honestly, like, pick uh, not the highest ones, because... How much money do we even have? We don't have enough money to pay them that daily. Uh, okay, that's enough. Every unit should be led by a lord. The higher their command skill, the higher the unit's morale will be, and the lower the chances of the soldiers fleeing when taking damage. You will also select the warriors who will form the squad and the equipment they will be armed with. The distribution of weapons among squad members will be automatic with your more skilled soldiers receiving higher quality equipment. Click on the squad creation button. Select the commanding lord. Move all your warriors to the squad by clicking on them. Move the second lord into the squad as well. Arm your squad. Finish by clicking on create at the bottom of the menu. So, this will do Slav Lub. Um, Create six warriors and six weapons. Great. Now wait for your new warriors to pick up their weapons from the warehouse. Okay. <coughs> the squad is under your direct control and can be managed with the right mouse button. You can find this menu in the lower left corner. It's time to attack. When the squad is selected, click the squad is selected. Where's the squad? Click the right mouse button on the enemy squad's banner. 
to engage in combat. They are waiting for you northwest of the village. Wait for the battle results. You can also send the squad to any location on the map by clicking the mouse button on the ground. All right, so I think we had selected them, and there they go. And we kept all of our people. Victory. The bandit squad has been defeated and their leader is vanquished. Your warriors will capture and take as hostages those who survived, and the peasants will bring them to a settlement later. Now is a good time to launch a counterattack on their camp. Switch to the global map. Um, now it's time to deal with the bandits. Click on the bandit settlement. Its menu will open in the bottom left corner. Select attack. Select your current squad. Wait for the squad to reach the bandit camp. Okay. Attack. Squad. Send army. Speed that up a bit. And where are they at? Oh, there they go. Party has reached the bandit camp and is preparing to launch an attack. Click the battle icon. Here you can see your own and the enemy squad, as well as an approximate balance of power. You can retreat from the battle if it seems unwinnable, play out the battle automatically, or personally command your squad in combat. Click on the central button to start the battle. Okay, when you initiate the attack, your squad is positioned on the left while the enemy is on the right. Click on your squad's banner to control them. Use right click to move the selected squad. To attack the enemy squad, right click on their banner. Wait for the results. Victory. Nobody died. We captured three people. Bandit camp destroyed. Relationship with neighbor plus five. Attitude of matriarch towards your king is plus 12. We got 75 gold and three prisoners. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. We are at the 30 minute mark. So I think, can I save this? Or let's just continue, I guess. During the game, you can always seek assistance. Um, by opening the help menu. Sometimes hints related to your current situation will appear here. You can disable this. You have completed the basic training. You can now continue the current game at easy difficulty level or through the main menu, start a new game by creating your noble family and customizing the political map and difficulty to your liking. All right, I think, I think that's what we're gonna do on the next episode. So. We have completed the tutorial, and on the next episode, we're going to start brand new and see what happens. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Bye!